Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso has just received a batch of equipment from China. Very interesting, fellas. I mean, this is Burkina Faso, remember? Beautiful place, lovely people. Very, very hot, though. Very, very hot. Some of the nicest people I've ever met. If you come to Africa, I suggest you go have a look at Burkina Faso. Surely you love the people. And the food. Trust me. So on March 21st, China sent equipment to Burkina Faso as a donation, as a gift. Okay? You don't get many gifts nowadays. As a gift. And what equipment have been sent? They've sent pickup trucks, crane trucks, light trucks, fabled trucks, water fuel tankers, satellite phones. What are these equipment? You're suddenly asking. These are equipment to fight against terrorism. For those of you who don't know, Burkina Faso is a beautiful country. African French speaking country. Yeah, they were colonized by the French for many, many years. They were beaten. They were, you know, you know the drill, like many other African nations. But in the 1960s, they got freedom, or what many people call freedom, liberation, independence. Many experts don't believe the independence was genuine because even though the French left the country officially, they were still in the country economically in many other ways. Now, Burkina Faso right now is led by a group of military, a group of soldiers. The president, Ibrahim Traoré, very young man, 34 years old. Yes, you heard me right. 34 years old. is leading a massive country filled with millions of people. Very intelligent, very brave, very determined. Burkina Faso right now is not in very good terms with France and many other Western nations. Why is that? Because they feel like even though they're supposed to be a free country, they are not really free. Why are they not free? Because number one, the currency they use in Burkina Faso is called the CFA franc. And the CFA franc is money that is printed right now as we speak in France. So basically, after they got independence, they officially got independence, but the money they use is still printed in France. Now, we were talking about 1960. Why hasn't this been a problem for all these years? Because... Many experts believe that the leaders of Burkina Faso for so many years were not strong enough. They were afraid of the French. There are theories that went along the lines that every time a leader went against a former colonialist, they got. So many of these leaders were very afraid to actually affirm themselves and ask for real freedom. Now we got a bunch of new guys, young men, soldiers, military, who are not afraid at all. In 2022, they toppled the president. They took power. And they said, from now on, we are not working with no Western nation. From now on, we are working on a 50-50 basis, win-win basis. From now on, it's respect and respect. The consequences were like many European countries cut ties with Burkina Faso. It's crazy, yeah? You cut ties with France and many other, other countries cut ties with you? How crazy is that? I mean, you cut tie with France because you feel like they're not treating you with respect. Uh, they, they're not respecting your freedom. Then other European countries cut ties with you. How crazy is that? That's exactly what happened. And during that time, guess what happened? China came offering things. What is China offering? China's offering to Burkina Faso in its fight against terrorism, pickup trucks, crane trucks, light trucks, fab trucks, water tankers and fuel tankers. And also satellite phone, satellite phone for war. Obviously, that allows you to communicate with a little more privacy. Okay. In the meantime, as China is offering satellites and trucks and stuff for Burkina Faso, Mali is accusing France of equipping terrorists with intelligence and satellites and drones. How crazy is that? Burkina Faso, here's Burkina Faso. Here's the map. Burkina Faso receiving stuff from China to fight terrorists. Mali, here's the map. Accusing France of providing intelligence to terrorists. Now, where do these terrorists come from? The story starts with Muhammad Gaddafi. Here's Mohammed Gaddafi. He was a leader of Libya, and here's Libya on a map. Yes, here's Libya. 
Libya, Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger. This man, whose name is Muhammad Gaddafi, was a leader of Libya. Muhammad Gaddafi had a policy of giving to his people because his country was so rich with oil. What he did was, whenever they sold a massive amount of oil, he gave each person a percentage of the benefits they made. Yes, fellas. Every citizen got a percentage of the benefit they made. So it was a free country. Whenever somebody wanted to get married, he received $5,000 and an apartment for free from the government. Mohammed Gaddafi, in his country, there was no tax being paid. You work, you earn your money, it's your money, no need for tax. Now, this place looked like paradise for you. Now, the Western nations say this place needed democracy. Now, just think about it. I mean, you live in a country where you pay zero tax. If you marry somebody, you get $5,000 in an apartment. You want to do agriculture, you're going to give you a trainer or a coach to teach you how to do agriculture. They even give you the trucks to work for, for free until you have enough money to reimburse. Then some dude from Europe or America says, you guys are not democracy. You, we need to bring you democracy. Gaddafi needs to step down from power and leave. There is a danger of a stalemate that over time could be bloody. What I want to make sure of is that the United States has full capacity to act potentially rapidly. That's exactly what happened. So many experts believe the reason why they attacked Gaddafi and lying that he was trying to finish his people. That's what they say. They say Gaddafi is a crazy man trying to finish his people. No demonstration at all in the streets. No, no one against us. Against me for what? Because I am not president. But, but, but then they love me, all my people with me. They love me all. But if they do love they, you... They, they will die to, to protect me and my, my people. If, no, no. if, if you I mean, say they do love you, then why are they capturing Benghazi and they say they're against you there? Why are they in it is guide, Zaria? It is a guide. It is a guide. Not my people. It is a guide. Al-Qaeda. A guide. A guide. Yes. Colonel Gaddafi, the President of the United States, the leaders of Britain and other leaders are calling on you to step down, to leave Libya, to leave your position of power. Will you do that? <laughs> Who would leave his homeland? Why do I leave my homeland? Why do I leave Libya? It's because they actually did not want that model of Gaddafi to be exported to other countries. Because Gaddafi made other Africans believe that Africa needed nobody. Africa was rich enough to take care of itself. Now, very, very sad situation, unfortunately. They brought in some people from different places in the world to come and finish Gaddafi. Today, we can definitively say that the Gaddafi regime has come to an end. After they finished Gaddafi, those very people they brought to fight Gaddafi became terrorists. Yes, in those areas, creating mayhem. So before Gaddafi, there was none of these things. After they finished Gaddafi, then there was terrorist problem. And guess what they did? They came to all these countries in Africa, say, okay, from now on, we can help you fight the terrorists that we most likely brought by trying to take out Gaddafi. That's exactly what happened. So now Burkina Faso has had enough of being run like children. That's why they've turned their side. And China sees an opportunity. China has come. Our friendship and our support for our Burkina B friends, it is also one of the realization of the Global Security Initiative formed by President Xi Jinping. We must believe that China is still a credible partner of our African friend on the path to security and development. Offering weapons? for free, while African nations that are trying to free themselves are unable to access weapons from Western nations. China comes, hey fellas, here are trucks and bulldozers and free telephone satellites so you can fight terrorists. Now, do you think these people are going to give China an opportunity in business or not? Of course, they're going to give you an opportunity in business. The difference between China and other people is when China comes to Africa, they bring you a very clear project, very clear plan. This is what we can offer you. We can build the red road for you. Okay, We can build the road for you, but you're going to pay us this way. I'm going to give you a very simple example. Chinese build the red road in Kenya, part of it at least. Chinese build a road in Uganda from Kampala, which is the capital, to the airport. Before that, people spent about two or three hours was traveling from Kampala to Entebbe to take an airplane. After the Chinese came and discussed with the president, they found an agreement where the Chinese built the road. Now people travel 30 minutes from the capital to the airport. However, there are toll gates that allows them to repay the money to the Chinese until they pay the money. You know what I mean? So I'm bringing you the service. You know exactly what you're getting. At the end of the day, I get my money. I'm happy. You get your whatever you're looking for. You're happy. Obviously, Western nations don't like that. Western nations don't want you to go to China because they say uh, China is what they call 
call the Chinese debt trap. So the, the term Chinese debt trap refers to the theory that China uses loan to developing countries. China gives loan to developing countries and developing countries are unable to pay the loan. They will come into your country. If you cannot pay, then they'll take access to whatever minerals you have or some of the biggest assets like airports or port. They will seize them. Now, What's clear is, as opposed to what you get from Western nations, they give you debt. If you can't pay, it's a big issue. Or they give you debt, but they don't give you the cash. You want to build a road? You want money? Okay, we're going to give you money. But provided you use our company to build the road, how about that? Oh, then you're going to use our engineers. That's how it is. And we're not going to give you all the money all in once. We're going to give you batch by batch by batch, small by small. We need to control you. The Chinese don't do that. They give you the money. Do your thing. But pay. If you pay, we're good. If you don't pay, then we're going to move in. And Chinese give Africans debt in a very low price as compared to Europe. Again, China has really come to Africa. A while back, they started a project of building an hospital. The Burkina Faso people said this donation is a considerable contribution to fight against terrorism. And also a while back, China came into Burkina Faso to build an hospital. A massive hospital that will keep 500 people at the same time with the most advanced techniques, the most advanced technology, making it very cheap for many people that used to go further away looking for treatment. They can now get access to treatment in Burkina Faso. Now, I'm not saying China is good. I'm not saying China is the way you need to go. You cannot leave one form of colonialism to jump into the next form of colonialism. Now, it's up to Africans to be intelligent enough to know how to deal with people the way they're supposed to be dealt with. Everybody has a history. Just look at the history, okay? What have the Chinese done to the people in the past? Based on that, you should know what stance to take, which position you should be looking at. China and Burkina Faso have been dealing. I mean, Western nations have pushed them away because they don't want to do anything to do with France. They also say bye-bye to you. But then Burkina Faso say, okay, good. From now on, we're going to deal with Russia and China. So China and Burkina Faso have a trade relationship. And their trade relationship is... Burkina Faso export to China mainly raw material like, like cotton, that's the biggest export they send to China, zinc ore and oil seed. China export to Burkina Faso mostly manufactured goods like machinery, metal, transportation equipment like vehicle, trucks and stuff. But there is some sort of a trade imbalance. Obviously, Burkina Faso need to catch up. Let me know how you feel about this. Um, China bringing in trucks and weapons to Burkina Faso to fight terrorism. In the meantime, Western nations are sending people in Africa to come preach them on to let men be with other men. You know, uh, like somebody said, there's this man, a senator from America that needs, that was very clear in what he said. Then I watched to see what was taking place when we look at our diplomacy. It was over two decades it took before in the 117th Congress we passed a state authorization bill and had to do that through the NDAA as opposed to saying we're going to stand strongly on diplomacy. Guess what China did during that period of time? They doubled their diplomacy budget. Guess what else is happening? For the first time, China has more consulates than the United States of America. General Kelly said either we do and get engaged in more diplomacy or you're going to have to spend more money on bullets. He said clearly the external policies of Western nations need to change. It shouldn't be of teaching people how to live, who to marry, who to be with, how to give birth. Nobody wants that. We already know what we need to do. We need construction, infrastructure, investment, money, development, agriculture. Those are the things... Communication, telecommunication, transportation, those are the things Africa needs. We don't need to be lectured on how, which position to use or take. God bless.